Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. You may or may not know that I sell an entire course on Topaz Labs Photo AI. It's called Mastering Topaz Labs Photo AI. This morning, I received a very interesting question from someone who purchased the course. Specifically, they shoot raw on camera and they use lossless compression in camera. When they send the raw file from Lightroom Classic into Photo AI, Photo AI will return a DNG file. The thing though, that DNG file is humongous. It's like more than four times the size of their original RAW file. And they were wondering if there was something they could do about it. Well, there is, but it's kind of a workaround. But I'm going to explain what they're talking about in this video and demonstrate that workaround. And by the way, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website and my course and I'll have a discount code there as well. Now, what we're going to be working with is a Nikon RAW file. You can see I have it on this folder on my desktop. And this Nikon RAW file is lossless compressed, and it's 29.4 megabytes in size, and the specific image is right here. It is an unedited RAW file. Nothing has been done to it. It has a lot of noise. So I'm gonna send it to Photo AI. I'm gonna go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, and over and all the way down to process with Photo AI. Now it's going to take this Nikon RAW file and it's going to open it up into Topaz Labs Photo AI. And if you're not familiar with Photo AI, it has something called Autopilot where it will automatically examine the image and determine what it needs and then apply whatever it needs. In this case, it has determined that it needs raw denoise added to it. Now I'm not going to belabor the point. If I was doing this in real life, I would probably look at every I'll edge, edge to edge of the image to make sure all the noise was removed. Tweak raw denoise so that it's perfect. I might add sharpening as well. But let's just say I'm happy with the way it looks. What I'll do is I'll click to export to Lightroom Classic. And it can't save a, a Nikon RAW file, so it has to save it as a DNG. And you'll notice that the DNG is 124.5 megabytes in size. That is over four times larger in the original Nikon RAW file. And this is relative too. So if you have a RAW file that's 50 megabytes in size, it's going to be over 200 megabytes of DNG when you're all said and done. Well, what can you do? Well, let's go back to um, Lightroom for a moment. This is the original Nikon RAW file. Now here is the file that we got back from Photo AI. It's that DNG that's over 124 megabytes in size. What you could do is export this from Lightroom as a DNG file. Let me show you. We'll go here and I want to um, not export it to the desktop. I'm gonna do it to the same folder and I'm going to export it as a DNG. Now you have the option to use lossy compression. Lossy compression though is loss compression. That means it's going to eliminate some of the data and interpolate that data later. And usually you don't wanna do that. So we're not going to do that, at least not at the moment. So we're gonna leave that off. So all we're doing is we're taking this DNG file and we're exporting it as a DNG file. We're not doing anything else to it. We'll use the compatibility camera Roth 15.3 and later with a medium sized JPEG preview. And it's going to go in that same folder. And I think I have somewhere here, choose a new name for the exported file if it has the same file name. So we'll click export, let it do its thing. And now you'll notice that this exported file is 59.4 megabytes in size. So it's considerably smaller. It's still uh, more than, well, it's about twice as big as the original Nikon RAW file, but it still is a lot smaller. So we're going from 29.4 and then we went all the way up to 124.2. And now we're back down to 59.4. So that's a little better. So what you could do now is you could delete the large file, the large DNG file from your Lightroom catalog and import this smaller DNG file. Now just for fun, let's just see what would happen if you came down here and you turned on lossy compression. And we'll use lossy compression and see how small it gets now. Now it's down to 3.7 megabits, megabytes. So it's way smaller. So those are your options uh, to try to handle those humongous raw files you get back from Topaz Labs. And by the way, I looked this up. Uh, Topaz Labs says that although the DNG format is 
you know, in, um, you know, anyone could use it. It's even though Adobe invented it, they allow everyone to use it. The words escaping me what it's called, but anyone could use it. So anyone can use the DNG format. What they can't use is compression. So they're not allowed to use any of the compression algorithms for the DNG format. At least that's what Topaz Lab says. So they can't compress it themselves. But apparently, if you just export it from Lightroom without checking the lossy compression box, it uses lossless compression on it. And then if you do check that lossy compression box, it uses loss compression where it will interpolate data, get rid of data, and then interpolate it when it has to you know, display the image. So typically, you do not want to use lossy compression. But this is a solution if you want to try to make those humongous raw files from any plugin when you get this humongous raw file back. If you want to make it smaller, just export it as a DNG in Lightroom and you should be able to do it. And that's it for this, uh, this video. And a rem reminder, uh, if you're interested in my course, I'll have a link to it in the description below this video along with a discount code. Thanks.